Hello, and welcome to my video series, Installing and Configuring IBM Domino 9 Social Edition on CentOS 6. I'm going to be covering 64-bit and also 32-bit. My name is Devin Oltz, and I am your host, and this is Part 2, CentOS Initial Configuration. So, uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. In the last video, we did an initial installation onto a virtual machine of CentOS 6, 64-bit. We set the host name of that virtual machine to be demo.learningxpages.com. And so here I am at the initial uh, login screen. And you'll see there it says demo login. It's waiting for me to log in. I'm going to go ahead and log in as root and enter my password. And I am logged in. Now, <clears throat> Whenever setting up a Linux machine, it is critical that you have internet access because Linux is very, very, very capable of updating itself and it likes to do that via the internet. So the first thing we need to do is ensure that our internet is in fact working. This is, as I said before in the previous um, video, a very minimal base installation. It's command line only and we are configuring and installing only the services that we want and need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the IP command with the A option to get a display what's going on with my network. And here are my two network devices. The first is a virtual device. It's the LO or loopback device. This device is, is normally used. This is your, your standard loopback interface. This is what you use, what systems and applications and stuff use in order to do loopback communications within your machine. We're not going to mess with that. We What we care about is the Ethernet device, which is, you'll see right there, uh, number two device, ETH0 is the name of the device. And what we want to do is we want to configure that device. The way we're going to configure that device is by modifying the configuration script file for that device. So, so the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, take a look and see if that file does in fact exist. Uh, and I'm going to use the ls command, and I'm going to check the directory within which I expect it to be. So that would be the etc slash sysconfig slash network hyphen scripts uh, ifcfg hyphen, and now the name of the device, which is eth, oops, eth0. And I have, I don't see the Thing. What have I done wrong? Um, networks. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's what I typed it wrong. So I'm going to use my up arrow, and that brings back the previous command. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to insert an S, because that's where I screwed up. There the file exists. Now I want to manually edit that file. To edit that file, I'm going to use the V utility, VI. Uh, this is a favorite among Linux people. They love this guy. Um, and actually, rather than typing everything again, I'm just going to use my up arrow command and use my left arrow on my keyboard to come back and just change that to VI. Here's the VI command. Uh, or there's the file in the VI editor, or the V editor, depending upon what you like to say. And what I want to do is I want to modify this file. So what I need to do is I need to go into insert mode on this file, and I do that by entering um, excuse me, asterisk I and uh, hitting enter. That takes me into insert mode. And you can tell that I'm in insert mode because it says insert right there at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the lines in this, in this file and change what I need. Now the device name, that's ETH0. We don't want to change that. The HWADDR, that's the hardware address, the MAC address. Don't want to change that. It's an ethernet type. Don't want to change that. Universal ID. UUID, Universally Unique ID. We don't want to change that. On boot, we do want to change this because we want this device to be activated when the machine boots. So on boot equals yes. All right, I've changed that. Um, uh, name control, yes, okay. And uh, boot proto, DHCP. This is where I would determine whether or not I wanted to do static or DHCP control. If you want to do static, you can enter the static information at this point. If you have downloaded from my website, either uh, www.learningxpages.com or www.devinolson.net, if you've downloaded the follow-along document, the PDF document for this video series, 
uh, there are instructions in there and an example on how to set this to be a static uh, IP address. We don't care about that at that point. I'm going to use DHCP because, again, I'm in a virtual machine. Uh, I want to get out of insert mode, so I can do that by pressing the escape key. And now I want to save my changes, and more importantly, I want to write my changes to disk, and then I want to quit. And the way I do that is by entering the asterisk, uh, followed by a colon, and then W for the word write. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see what I'm typing, followed by the letter Q for quit, and then I hit enter. And I have now exited the V editor. If I use my up arrow on my keyboard and come back and replace VI with CAT for catalog, I can print out the um, contents of the file and we can see my changes have in fact been made. So we're happy with that. The next thing I want to do is I want to start my network and I use that using the service command. Uh, hey Mr. Linux, hey Mr. CentOS, you have a command called service. This means I want to do a service, so get it started. Um, what service do I want to use? I want to use the network service. Okay, wonderful. And what do I want to do with that service? I want it to start. So service network start is my command. And there we can see, look at that. The network has started up and it's operational. The next thing I want to do is I want to install some base packages. Now, something very cool about Linux and different from the Windows world. If you come from the Windows world, um, you're used to installing an application. When you install an application in Windows, you get your install file. This can be an executable such as setup.exe. It can be a command file, a com file, which you can use, or it can be an MSI in the later versions of Windows, uh, Microsoft uh, installation file, an MSI script file. Anyway, any one of those, you run that executable, and what that, that, that executable does is it updates your system, it, it writes you to your uh, appropriate file paths, directories are created, uh, DLLs are instantiated and registered with the system, your registry is updated, etc. All that stuff happens. But it happens on a one-to-one -one basis, meaning when you want to install an application, you have to run that application's installer. The difference in a Linux world is Linux has an op operating system installer and we run the operating system installer and we tell the operating system installer which file or package we want to we want it to install and that's really cool because we only have to deal with one installer and one uninstaller it just does it and by telling it what we want it to install it goes out and knows what it does and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the yum package manager installer and what's cool about that is um, it knows about a lot of stuff that even I haven't even installed on the system. And more importantly, it knows where to find them. That's what's cool about it. So I'm going to tell it, uh, well, it knows where to look up to find the packages. That's a better way of saying it. So I'm going to use the yum command to install a bunch of stuff. So uh, here we go. Let's uh, enter my keyboard command, yum. And um, whenever you do installations and stuff using the yum command, it's going to ask you questions. It asks you a lot of prompts. Hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to create that? Do you want to verify this other thing? And what's cool about the yum command is in, right here in the command, I can say, you know what, minus y, I want to automatically answer yes to anything you're going to ask me. So that's what I want you to do. And what is it I want you to do? Well, I want you to install some things. So I hit in, install. And there we go. I want to uh, use the yum package manager to do some installation. And I want it to automatically install or automatically do everything it would ask me to automatically assume a, a yes was answered. What is it I want to install? Well, I've got 13 packages that I care about, and I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. The first thing is bind-utils. This is a utilities package to use to query a DNS. The next thing I want to install, and you'll notice I'm just uh, spacing them out, which is just a space, no command or comma or anything. The next thing I want it to do is install the file package, F-I-L-E. This is a package for determining the type of files within your system. The next one thing I want is GCC. This is the new, the GNU uh, compiler collection, uh, a bunch of front ends for C++, on Objective-C, etc. This is how um, your Linux operating system will compile and prepare packages uh, and, and things that it needs to do. It uses this package in order to do it. The next utility I want is LSOF. This lists open files followed by NTP, Network Time Protocol Daemon. Um, that's a service that will run on the system to communicate and handle uh, network time to make sure that the time is, is uh, correct and synchronized. The next thing I want to install is Patch. 
this allows uh, Linux to automatically patch uh, files, uh, putting differences into files uh, rather than replacing entire files. The next thing I want is rsync, R-S-Y, oops, R-S-Y-N-C. This uh, allows the operating system to tell, and you, the user, to tell the differences between uh, files and also to do transfers and synchronizations. The next thing is SG3 underscore, underscore, U-T-I-L-S. Uh, that looks like a Q. SG3 underscore, yeah, it was a Q. U-T-I-L-S. Uh, this is uh, SCSI command utilities in order to interface with SCSI devices. Uh, the next one is very cool, sudo. Uh, this is the super user do command. This allows me to do a single command line to uh, perform a command or an instruction as the super user when I'm not signed in as a root. We'll get into that later when we um, actually create some users and the differences between root and regular users. The next thing I want is trace route. Uh, this allows me to trace a route from this computer to any place on the internet to which I have a, a URI or URL. The next one is a very, very cool um, tool called wget, W-G-E-T. This allows me to go and get files. I can um, pull files back and forth. I can interact or non-interactive. Uh, using it in a non-interactive fashion, just make, a commit, just make a command and go do stuff and it does this stuff for me. Uh, I'll get into that later because we're actually going to use that quite a bit. Uh, I want to install some utilities for my YUM um, uh, package manager. This is what's really cool about this is I'm going to be installing stuff to enhance the tool I'm using with using the tool I'm installing with. Kind of cool. The next thing I want is zip in order to zip files and unzip in order to unzip files. I'm not installing tar because that's built into the system in this install, I'll use tar as well. So those are all the things I want to install. I just hit the, uh, the return key and it's gonna go and do its thing. It's pulling down these files. Um, it determines the fastest mirror in order to find out for every single file in order to find where it is. Uh, this is a, a point where um, it would normally have asked me a question but because I entered the minus y command, it assumes that I'm, or it's obeying me. It's not assuming, it's obeying the fact that I said answer yes to everything. So it's going to go ahead and it's going to install all 13 of these packages that I've asked it to install in a completely automated fashion. doesn't care about me anymore. I don't have to interact with it in any way. It's just going to kind of do its thing. So that's kind of neat. Um, we'll go ahead and let it install. I realize that now I've used up 13 minutes of this video that I had planned for 9 minutes, but I don't really think I could have made it any shorter. It blasted pretty fast. So there, we're done. Uh, the packages are all installed. I'm very, very, very happy about that. Um, and that's the end of this particular video. We'll continue on later on. Uh, the next uh, video in the series, we'll do some, some additional configuration. We'll play with security settings and firewall settings and stuff like that. Uh, I'm bringing this to an end right now. Thank you very much for joining me. You can read about my Learning X Pages experience and, and X Pages development comments and thoughts on my Learning X Pages site. Um, you can read my blog at devinolson.net. Uh, you can also go to my friend David Leedy's website, uh, www.notesin9.com, where he's got some wonderful, wonderful sets of videos uh, that uh, explain how to do cool stuff with notes. Um, who knows, maybe you're watching this particular video from that site. You could be doing that. Uh, thank you again for joining me. My name is Devin Olson, and uh, 